everybody, uh, Kanao here, founder and author of SQL. So um, I want to start uh, borrowing uh, some uh, interesting slide from uh, Mark Halatan, a keynote last year, that he was speaking about database system and five important key elements when uh, database systems are, are deployed. This performance, efficiency, manageability, usability, and availability. The first two are pretty easy to understand. I mean, system, database system, or software in general has to be performant, provide a lot of uh, requests, provide uh, input, and they, of course, they also have to be efficient. And this is very easy to understand. Uh, but they also have to be manageable. So, like, if you have a complex system, you have to somehow be able to move part around and make sure that everything works. And uh, at the same time, the system has to be usable. So, this means it has to have features and the feature has to be available for end users. And at the same time, this system has to be highly available. Of course, this is a strong requirement for every system. So why I want to start from this slide? Uh, because actually, uh, in, um, in the database ecosystem, MySQL, or also the relational database management system, this is a common issue. Uh, there are new vendors. There are a lot of database system. And uh, they will always try to compare to each other who is best who is faster, who is more efficient, who is more performant. And uh, you know, they create new storage engine, uh, they create new algorithms to improve performance, and so on. And so they are in continuing competition with each other on performance and efficiency. And they always introduce new features, so they also improve the usability of their software. And uh, uh, of course, they also focus a lot on the reliability of the system. So if you look in the MySQL uh, ecosystem, for example, we have Calera, we have MySQL cluster, we have PXC, we have uh, group replication, and so on. So they are all focusing <coughs> on, on those key elements. But I see a problem here. The problem is that, uh, in my vision, there are two layers right now. One is the application layer, and the other one is the database layer. So all the things I mentioned so far, they all works in the database layer. So just in this layer, the, the vendors are competing to try to be fast and provide more features to the application. And the problem here is that those two layers communicate through an API, of course, so they know uh, how to speak with each other. But uh, for each of those layers, the other layer, most of the time, is a black box. The application does not really know what is happening inside that database when they're running a queries. And the database just runs queries without knowing why the application is asking those things. So they are black box, and uh, who manage them, of course, they are a different person. And uh, also in this case, they don't have confidence in, uh, in the other field. That's absolutely normal. So in my opinion, there is something missing here. Because, again, the application, you don't know what the application is in the database. So this was the main motivation for creating Proxy SQL. That is a proxy that empowers the DBA. So now the DBA is the one responsible for managing the traffic between the application and the database server. And of course, it improved the manageability of the system. And that is the key element that is not being taken care of from, from the main database vendors. And of course, in this way, it also improved the performance and the heavy of the system. And uh, it creates a shield around the database. So basically, uh, this layer is able to perform several operations that are being sent from the application to the database server, like blocking traffic, or throttling it, or you know, uh, it can route traffic based on where the server uh, it is, and uh, understanding it has to perform some read write split, or if the server itself is highly available, and uh, you know you have master state replication, and you have promotion and stuff like this, the proxy is the one responsible for understanding where things has moved around and notify the application that things has changed. Actually, for the application point of view, nothing has changed. So the application is completely transparent. From the application, everything is completely transparent. So this is my vision of how uh, a database system has to be deployed. So you have one application layer. You have the database layer, as I was mentioning before. And then you have a tiny layer between the application and, and the proxy. So the application and the database. And this layer is what creates a database as a service layer. And uh, it is implemented through Proxy SQL that performs, that acts as a reverse proxy. A reverse proxy. In my opinion, this is something very uh, interesting because being a reverse proxy, this means that the application is actually 
executing queries on the proxy, and then is the proxy responsible for executing the query and transforming the query if it's required to the right database system. Uh, one important thing here to highlight is that you know, somebody might think, okay, so we deploy proxy SQL uh, across the board and we solve all our problems. Of course, this is not the case at all because uh, proxy SQL is not an application manager. So if you have very standard classic application with masters and slaves and you have promotions, master failing and uh, the slaves replacing uh, the new the old master becoming now the new master, of course, uh, proxy SQL won't do this. Proxy SQL is just creating the layer between the application and the database system. But what proxy SQL can do is to detect that something has happened and that a failover happened. So, for the application perspective, everything is transparent while everything is under the proxy moves around. And of course, proxy SQL not being an application manager, this means that you still need a uh, a software taking care of this, like MHA, orchestrator, or replication manager. Um, having this layer of database as a, as a service layer uh, makes things interesting because in the current ecosystem, uh, we are having way more software and database system than MySQL, so things are evolving a lot. And uh, this is where PokéSQL is also trying to, to fill the gap. Um, so, uh, the reason behind it is that now Proxy SQL is able to communicate not only with MySQL but also with other relational database management systems like Kickass or being an SQLite server. So the application will still communicate with the proxy using the MySQL protocol and then Proxy SQL will figure out where it has to send this query, if it has to send to a MySQL server or to something else. Um, this intentionally they put two more boxes like without specifying what is going to be next because there is no clear roadmap for what is going to be next because being an open source project <coughs> will be more like depending from the needs of the community uh, new uh, support for new database will be introduced. And finally, uh, because an open source project is on GitHub, please try it, open pull request, open feature request, uh, create issue, the need. try to be participant in the forum and of course there is the website where you can find a lot of tutorial. And that's it.